Oh no, Mr. K, are you there? Are we having it? Yeah, I'm here. Can you okay. can you see me and hear me? I can see or I can hear you. Oh, there you are. I see you now. Let me go ahead. Yeah. And Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, I caught the tail end of the story. And since I'm a retired school teacher, I'm a big fan of Vincent. And that actual story I used to read to my second graders because we would do a uh, unit on Vincent and we would learn to paint like Vincent did. So that was a, a real cool treat for me. Thank you for sharing that. It, 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 can everybody hear me okay? Just give me a thumbs up or, you know, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not uh, real comfortable with the virtual world. So you, you let me know, um, you know, last year when I did the lesson, uh, uh, Mr. Sheik used to hop in if there was any, uh, you know, uh, need for pause or if anybody had any questions or anything. So, Miss Brittany, please feel free to do that. Okay. Um, my lesson is a, is a cool segue, I think, to the whole Vincent Van Gogh theme because um, I'm going to present a uh, a form of design it's it's therapeutic design it's called zen tangle and um next week i believe it's next week during animal week I'll, I'll get into drawing some more uh animal characters and things of that nature but i want everybody to uh be nice and calm and relaxed and to know that you don't need any type of special talent to be able to succeed in today's lesson in fact I think when you're done with it, uh, you will be amazed at the cool design that you were able to create uh, that you really didn't even know was inside of you. And the cool thing about Zentangle is the, the segue or the, the comparison to Vincent is it was designed as a way to make people feel better. And Miss Brittany, you mentioned that, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, I can't, <laughs> let me see. Miss Al Mrs. Alcott, okay, you mentioned that there were some people very unkind to Vincent in the story, okay? So Vincent had some feelings of sadness at times. So this therapeutic uh, design here is to make, it's designed to make people feel better. And it was created not even 20 years ago by an artist and a, uh, a monk of all people. And um, the, its its sole purpose is to make people feel happy. So I hope when kids design this uh, Zentangle today, it makes you feel happy. Now, since I don't live in the virtual world, uh, I had to, when I taught, I had, you know, the, the updated technology, uh, the, the document cameras and whatnot to help me. So last year, I was just kind of drawing on a big old scratch pad. And the kids were able to follow me that way. So I hope that's the case this year. I'm just going to kind of sit to the side and I'm going to do the uh, designing. If I can square up my camera here, uh, I'll be doing the designing uh, on my giant uh, scratch pad here. Any type of paper will work. And um, you can use something as basic as a pencil. I'm going to use a Sharpie so that it shows up better on the screen. And um, if you need or if you have a ruler, that would be great, but it's not necessary. Don't go thinking you cannot succeed if you don't have a ruler. And then the last thing I'm going to say is um, I do have a few colored pencils, but crayons or markers or anything work. You don't need to have those because Zentangle actually was created to appear in black and white. So um, color is just an added bonus, if that makes sense, okay? So can everybody see my paper okay as I, be, as I get set? Okay, thank you. And I have, uh, Miss Brittany, if you don't mind, I sort of have you large on my screen. So you're my go-to person. If you need to hop in and interrupt me, it's not a problem at all, okay? Um, you'll notice one supply I did not include was an eraser. Um, that doesn't mean you cannot use an eraser, but the creators of Zentangle uh, designed it so that there is a, uh, an attitude in your brain, and that is there are no mistakes. 
So any mark you put down on the paper is a good mark. Don't uh, feel that it's inadequate or not your best work in any way, shape, or form. That's why I'm jumping just right in with a Sharpie because whatever mark I create is going to be a good mark. Remember, this is designed to make you feel good, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put three dots on my paper and I encourage you all to do this, okay? Um, I'm going to kind of put a dot somewhere at the top towards the center. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center. And then the other two dots are going to be in each corner. So I have a dot here and I have a dot here. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to separate my paper into uh, three sections and they're going to be triangular sections. Everybody okay so far? Okay, then I'm going to connect the dots. Um, my wife asked me the other day when I was a kid if I enjoyed connect the dots and I said, absolutely, okay. And um, Miss Brittany, another favor I'll ask of you is this, um, if there's any comments, could you read them? Because there's no way I'll be able to see them. Um, I've had so many eye surgeries on my eyes that, that I just cannot read that small print. So. I'm going to connect the dots. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if cool. Any, if anything comes up, if any questions come up, I will let you know. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to connect these dots. Um, it's not so really supposed to be a straight line. If your line is squiggly and wavy like a piece of spaghetti, that's totally fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down with kind of like a wavy, squiggly line. And I'm going to connect those first two dots. So basically, we're going to build kind of like an isosceles triangle. I think that's a triangle that has like almost three equal sides if my math skills uh, serve me correctly. And then here's another squiggly line that connects the dots. Okay, so almost looks like a mountain peak or like I said, a triangle. Okay. So we've created three individual sections, okay? Now remember, it's supposed to be stress-free, not stressful. So whatever marks you put down, just go with it, and the fun is in the design, okay? Now, if you go online after this lesson and you look up the word Zentangle, and it's spelled with a Z-E-N-T and then the word angle, A-N-G-L-E, you will see probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different designs. I'm going to teach you three of my favorites, okay? And um, for time reasons, I may not finish each individual section, and that would be something that you could do on your own uh, at the culmination of the lesson, because um, correct me if I'm wrong, are we supposed to end at about 11.45 or so? Around then, yeah, between okay. the half so if and I'm, five minutes, we're officially done at 12, but we want to leave room for questions and stuff. Just oh, okay, on. gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so yeah, my point is, if my Zentangle and your Zentangle is not finished at about, you know, 11.50, it's cool. You can finish it uh, on your own. And then, like I said, you can go online and look up other versions. Okay. So my first Zentangle um, is going to be, and I don't know the actual name of it, but when I taught it to my school students, I always called it the cinnamon swirls. Okay. Or a pinwheel. Okay. So you pick one section. You can pick whatever section you like. I'm going to pick this one. OK, you can pick any of the three because no two Zentangles are going to be the same. But a cinnamon swirl or a pinwheel has a circular shape to it. And the tail just kind of wraps onto the original circle. OK, so that's a pinwheel. And I used to tell the kids that uh, when I was. I don't know if they still have these or not, but when I was a kid, if you would get those giant lollipops that had like the, the swirl inside, uh, those were 
the ultimate in lollipops. Okay. Those were legit. Okay. Now, if you've ever seen an episode of SpongeBob at the bottom of a, a bikini bottom where all those bubbles kind of, uh, float to the surface. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create all kinds of different pinwheels that are going to connect. Okay. Uh, there's a rule in Zentangle that no two lines are supposed to ever cross each other okay they just kind of bump into each other okay so go ahead and start experimenting with little pinwheels that bump into each other all different sizes okay and if you draw one can everybody see okay miss Brittany? can everybody see okay all right now if you draw one that you want to be a little larger feel free to just add some extra layers to it, okay? So you can see that's why I call these cinnamon swirls, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the next maybe two minutes, and I encourage the kids to do the same. I'm going to fill up just this section with different size pinwheels or cinnamon swirls. So I'll see you kiddos in about two minutes. Does that make sense? Okay, happy drawing. And remember, don't get too stressed on, uh, you know, any imperfections because the rule in Zentangle is every mark is a good mark. All right, guys, get those pinwheels down. I don't know. Mr. K keeps talking about cinnamon swirls. It's making me hungry for cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I love cinnamon rolls. So like he said, don't worry about the size, whatever you want, just have them connecting. And like he said, you can always finish it later. Don't rush or try to rush to keep up. It's okay. We can always fill some more in later. And of course, I'm always watching your guys' videos as much as I can. So when you're done, if you want to go ahead and show a couple of them off, I would love to see the progress. And notice when I get to the border of the triangle, I'm stopping at the squiggly line. I think I had mentioned that no two lines are designed to cross. They just kind of bump into each other. I'm going to put a real tiny one in right there just to uh, make true on my statement that any size is an appropriate size. Okay. You can have giant ones, medium ones, or super small ones. And like I said, if you want to add more layers, it doesn't even have to be a complete pinwheel see how i just added those two little arcs right there so if you have any space that needs to be filled in you can just add different layers i'm going to go about 30 more seconds because i think i said we would go about two minutes before i introduce the next movement to you okay and hey i can i can't see all the kids um but i can see a few kids if anybody wants to hold up their pinwheels in progress feel free okay i'm gonna head on i, I don't see any <laughs> But Miss Brittany, if you see any, I do. We're getting yeah. a couple. We're getting a couple of them. I see Spencer and Lily and Tristan and Grayson and Hector and oh my gosh, there's too many of them. Everybody's Williams and uh, Taylors. Oh, these are looking amazing. And yep, you guys are just doing what you're doing. They are looking great so far. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. Okay, well, I'm going to jump to a second uh, section of my Zentangle, and um, you can pick uh, either of the remaining two sections to work inside, okay? There's no right or wrong, and remember, it's uh, stress-free and not stressful, okay? Um, my next area or my next Zentangle is going to be called 
the steel bar section because there's a lot of straight lines that are going to go uh, in various different directions. Okay, and this is where you can use a ruler if you like. Okay, you don't have to. Okay. Um, and to be honest with you, it might be kind of challenging for me to use a ruler and hold it up the whole time for you. But I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to set it just on my lap for a minute and I'm going to show you my initial uh, steel bar. It's going to look like a uh, kind of like a steel beam or a girder that would be the skeletal part of a building, if you've ever seen that. Or the Pittsburgh Steelers have a mascot called Steely McBeam. At least I think they still do. And he would carry around this foam beam on his shoulder. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to put it down, okay? And there's no rhyme or reason where I'm drawing this. I'm just going to draw it straight across my page. Um, two parallel lines, okay? So again, referring to math, two parallel lines would be two lines that do not cross. So remember how I said in uh, Zentangle, no two lines will cross, okay? Um, I'm wondering how much of my junky uh, room you're seeing here. I hope it's not too untidy. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna draw my first line and my second line. And I'm gonna call this a steel beam, okay? Someone says, remember, you don't have to have a ruler. That's awesome. Whoever said that? Oh, that's one of the camp directors. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no sweat. In fact, I'm going to start drawing without a ruler to prove that it's not necessary. Okay. Now, one of the things you can do here is you can add an extra line to the steel beam, okay? See, I drew that without a ruler, okay? So it's a little squiggly, squigglier, but who cares? Remember, um, Zentangle is a therapeutic form of design, designed to entertain your brain and make you feel happy as you work, okay? Now, um, these lines, they're not going to cross these, these two new lines that I'm going to draw. It's going to appear as though one of the beams is going underneath the other one, okay? So I don't know where you all live. You're probably all over the state, but I'm sure you've been driving down a highway where there's been an overpass, where there's like an elevated bridge above you, okay? So let's say I'm driving down the road and there is a road that goes underneath. This is the overpass and this is the underpass, okay? So I'm gonna draw a line that goes the whole way down. They're not crisscrossing or intersecting. One is going underneath the other. something like that. Okay, now here's a comparison. My mom used to bake cherry tart. And at the end of the cherry tart baking, she would kind of somehow cut these dough strips and start crisscrossing them on top of the pieces of tart, if that makes sense, okay? So here's what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start crisscrossing either underpasses or overpasses, or you can refer to them as doe strips or crisscrossy lines or whatever you wanna call them, okay? Now, see how one's underneath and one's on top. Feel free to fill up as much of this as you can with these crisscrossing lines. You can also add third or fourth areas. Okay, so here's another line. But look, I'm not going to cross that. I'm going to go underneath it and come out the other side. And it kind of gives like this woven appearance. Okay, so feel free when you draw these steel bars. 
feel free to add third and fourth sides, but try to remember that no two lines are going to cross. So when a line comes up on another line, it's almost like it says, oh, excuse me, sir, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to go behind you and come out the other side. Does that make sense? Okay. Now I've got a huge amount of space down here. So you can just start randomly filling it up with more steel bars. Look how I came the whole way down here. Okay. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it on my lap again. And if you have a ruler, feel free to take that ruler and I am going to somehow place it across my page. I'll show it to you in a minute here. If you hear any noise in the background, my cat's trying to get into the, to the door here. It's scratching at the door. And she's big enough that she can get inside. So I took my ruler and across the bottom part of the mountain, I drew a steel bar that went underneath the original steel bar, okay? And again, if you want to add tops and bottoms to the lines, feel free. Remember when a line comes up on another line, it just says, excuse me, sir, or excuse me, ma'am. I will go behind you and come out the other side, okay? So same as what we did before, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to kind of fill up the middle section uh, with as many steel bars or dough strips or crisscrossy lines or whatever you want to call them, okay? And I'm actually, I think I'm going to put mine down for the two minutes and then I'll hold mine up at the end of two minutes and I'll show you my progress. And guess what? If you're like me and your mind wanders and the cinnamon swirls are calling back to you and you want to go back and do a few cinnamon swirls, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay. So I'm looking at my clock. It says 1126. I'll see you all in two minutes. Okay. Sound good? I'm going to work on my steel bars. All right, guys, while you're working on that, I just wanted to go ahead and call out uh, Mr. K. We did have a couple people say that your triangle looked like a Christmas tree. And then, That's we, awesome. had, then we have an, uh, a mountain, of course. And then once we got those cinnamon rolls on there, it looked like an avalanche because they're just kind of hanging out and falling. But they're all, there we have some people sharing them in chat. Thank you so much for sharing them. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Oh, say they're coming along so nicely. Look at all of those cinnamon rolls everywhere. All of the bars everywhere. Very, very lovely. And I love the input from kids because kids can think of so many different cool creative ways to describe things so much different than us grown-ups. There we got some a couple more in there. Oh, very nice guys. And like I said, don't feel rushed to try to get it all done right now. You don't have to go ahead and uh, get everything completed during this time. Uh, we just want to go ahead and give you an idea. So if you want to expand on it later or maybe try something different later, that's okay too. Uh, just we're going to go through here. I think Mr. K said we have one more type of thing to do. And then you guys can go ahead and mix it up if you like or continue working on this one. It's okay. Just be creative. But thank you so much, guys, for sharing. I'm still looking through. So if you want to keep sharing, I appreciate it. And my time's probably up on the two minutes. So let me show you what I've done. Um, I totally love the uh, the descriptions of the Christmas tree and the mountain and all those and the avalanche and all that uh, that you guys came up with. It's so cool. I just 
that's the fun part about being around kids. Like I said, the, uh, just the, the, the way you think is so, uh, creative and, and pure and, and innocent. It's just, um, it, it's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Now, if I had more time, I would totally put way more steel bars. Okay. And I want you guys to do that even after the lesson is over. Okay. But no matter how many steel bars you put on that particular section, whatever section you're working on, you're going to find that inevitably there are some empty pockets of space like this triangle that I so randomly created. It just appeared. I didn't, I didn't plan anything out. Okay. Now, when I used to teach Zen Tangle to my school kids, I would tell them, if you want to fill in any of those randomly created spaces with a thing called dice dots, it's a nice uh, effect. Okay. Now, if you've ever played a board game like Monopoly, or um, I used to play a board game when I was a kid called Payday, and uh, you roll a thing called a number cube or a die, singular, it's called die. D-I-E, but two of them, two or more together is called dice, okay, and you know they're numbered one through six, okay, so what I would tell the kids was this, if you have any empty spaces, look, I just put a two dot in that space there, okay, that's two dots, okay, now let's say you got a larger space, let's put four dots here, Okay, you've all rolled, rolled number cubes and you know what I'm talking about. Okay, or look, maybe I just want to put a big old one dot right there. It's just a way to liven up, make the woven steel bars look even more cool or more creative, if that makes sense. Okay, and then of course, we'll finish up with everybody's favorite or at least it was my favorite when you roll a six you know you're really doing a great job hopefully in the game you know you get to move six whole spaces or whatever it is okay so like i said if i had more time i would continue drawing more steel bars and more dice dots but it's like 1131, so we should probably move on to our final. Sometimes I call them slices of pizza, too, because they kind of look like slices of pizza. And that's a perfect segue into our final Zentangle movement for uh, the lesson. Okay, is everybody doing okay? Does anybody want to show theirs real quick before we get to the uh, third movement? Oh, there I see a lot of them up on the screen. I'm just oh, gonna yeah, I actually there. see one. There we go. Oh my gosh, everybody, those look so wonderful. Very nice. Yes, very beautiful. Thank you. And remember, you guys again can go ahead and screenshot if you'd like and put it in the chat. That'd be great. Now, for this third movement. It might be hard sometimes to uh, get to certain areas of your page. So there's no rule that says you have to keep your paper right side up, okay? As you progress through the artwork, feel free to move your picture or your creation any way you like, okay? Now, I mentioned the word pizza, okay? Now, I think everybody can make this connection in their brain. Mom pulls a tombstone pizza out of the oven, and she grabs the circular pizza slicer, pizza cutter. I don't even know what it's called, okay? And if it's a pepperoni pizza, inevitably, mom or dad or grandma or whomever, they're going to slice that pizza into sections and you know the piece of pepperoni that will ultimately get sliced in half okay so i'm going to call this third area this third zentangle i'm going to call it the pepperoni slices because they're going to look like half of a pepperoni slice okay now here's what i mean by that all along your third remaining section 
we're going to put these half moon looking designs. Okay, now they don't have to be equally spaced. They can be randomly spaced. They can even touch if you want them to. That looks like the McDonald uh, golden arches there, okay? But I'm gonna go the whole way around this pizza slice. And look, I'm gonna turn my notebook so that I can get to the bottom side. Half pepperoni slice there. Half pepperoni slice there. They don't have to be perfect. They look like polka dots cut in half. Okay, now let me turn it like this. They don't all have to be the same size. And look, I have room for one more right there. Okay. Now, this may take a little time, but I think it makes it look extra cool. I color them in. Now, I'm not going to color all of them in because we won't have time to do that. But I'm going to color just a few in. And maybe let me color one more in while we're at it. Okay. Now, when I used to teach school, kids would come to art class and uh, I would see them, I don't know, for 40 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever. And whatever we would put in place, I would say to them, okay, well, we'll work on it again next time. Okay, so that's going to be the exact same situation here. But let me show you, you know, you can work on this anytime in the future, but let me show how we're going to fill up this space. And this might be my favorite uh, Zentangle design, okay? Around every single pepperoni slice, we're going to put rainbow shapes. I'm going to go the whole way around every pepperoni slice, and I'm going to put a rainbow around every single one. And don't worry if your lines are imperfect or a little squiggly. Mine sure are. I'm going to go the whole way around the slice of pizza. And remember, if two lines would bump into each other, like happened here, one line says, oh, excuse me, sir, I'm going to go behind you and I'm going to come out the other side. Okay. Now I went the whole way around that pizza slice. Now I think you can figure out that if I keep putting rainbows on top of rainbows, eventually they're going to just all migrate towards the center of that pizza slice. And what you're going to find out is it's going to create a really, really cool effect in design. It almost looks like you're suspended above a theater. And this is the stage upon which the performers are acting. And then these are stairs where you can walk up on stage. Okay, if that makes sense to you. So if you keep going around that pizza slice, I should say pepperoni slice, but yeah, you are going around the pizza slice. If you keep adding these rainbow movements, you're going to notice eventually that you're going to run out of space. Okay, and here's what I do sometimes, because my mind is all over the place. Sometimes I'll just spend a little extra time on one pepperoni slice and go crazy on that one. 
And then remember, no two lines are supposed to cross. They're like, oh, excuse me, sir, or excuse me, madam. I'll just stop right there. I'll bump into you and maybe come out the other side. But as you'll notice, when you start filling this up, there is no other side because eventually you're just going to run out of space. So guess what? This is one area that we may not totally finish, but I think Mr. K is going to actually fill up this particular area real quick here. Oh, wait a minute. I lied. With my ADHD brain, I'm going to go back, look, and do a steel bar right there. Okay, it's okay to do that. And look, I'll do a cinnamon swirl here. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna go back to the pepperoni slices and I'm gonna see if I can fill up that remaining space, which I think I'm gonna be able to do. And when you finish it, it just looks like a cool design that I had no idea that I would be able to create. You know, it just came out because I was focusing on the movement and not the big picture, not the overall result, okay? Now, even if you do fill up that particular pizza slice, remember, you can go back and color in the original slice of pepperoni, okay? Now, let me mention this. I'm looking at my clock. It's like 1140. I had mentioned that I had grabbed up some colors earlier, okay? And I, on purpose, just figured, well, I'm going to grab some complementary colors, and those are colors that look good together, okay? So, for example, red and green, those are complementary colors. They're like Christmas colors. And then I think I grabbed like a blue and an orange, okay? So if you have time later and you wanna do this, let me grab the red and orange. Now this will take some doing, but it really looks neat in the long run, okay? So I think I got some kind of a blue here. You can actually take that color and you can shade in one of the rainbow slices. I think it's blue. I can't tell. Or is it purple? I don't know. I, my eyes are terrible if you haven't noticed by now. Is it blue, Miss Brittany? Okay. All right. So, and then I'm going to take its complement, which is orange. And the complementary colors, by the way, you may not know this. This is how a lot of sports teams pick their team colors two colors that look really, really good together, okay? And then I just start alternating, taking turns between the blue and the orange. Okay, let me do one more level here. Like so. All right, and then the color doesn't need to stop there. Let me take my other two compliments, okay? you can actually start filling in some of the other areas, okay? So there's a red center of a cinnamon swirl with a green outer realm. And like I said, those are very Christmassy colors, okay? The red and green are complements to each other, okay? So for the remaining couple of minutes before Q&A or share time or however you, know, you guys wanna do it, I'm going to work, I'm gonna set it on my lap for two minutes like we did before. I'm gonna work on some of my cinnamon swirls and I'm gonna work on filling in a few more of my steel bars and then at two minutes when the time's up, Miss Brittany 
you can tell us where we're headed at that point. Okay, so I'll see you guys in two minutes. I'm going to do some more therapeutic uh, doodling, which again is called Zentangle. Okay, see you guys in two minutes. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pull you up on my screen so I can see all the videos. I have a lot of people sharing pictures in chat of them. They are coming along so nice there. I see you guys holding them up for me. Thank you. And they are coming along beautifully, let me tell you. Now, I haven't seen, I don't know if you guys got that far because it is a little bit further down the line, but you can go ahead and start coloring sooner rather than later. You don't have to do it in any specific order, but um, I do see a lot of fun designs, a lot of very interesting and unique things going on. I greatly appreciate you guys sharing them with us. So, and like Mr. K said, you don't have to go ahead and uh, use a ruler. You don't have to go ahead and, um, you know, feel that you have to stay in one section if that's what you want to bounce around a different section. Do whatever feels right. And like you said, use complementary colors, use whatever colors that you like and make you feel good and that you think that it makes it pop and calls out to you. So let's see here. Don't think I've seen many other comments or anything. Um, and no questions yet, but let me see here. If anybody does have any questions, you can start thinking about those and we'll definitely go ahead and get around to them. We'll see you guys in about one minute. I see everybody, I see heads down, I see pencils and pens and stuff <laughs> crawling frantically. Huh. <laughs> And I'd have to agree with Miss Brittany. I got to go with Story Night as one of my favorite Vincent Van Gogh's. I do love all the sunflowers that he painted. Uh, just an amazing person. And that's so cool that you guys got to learn about him today. Absolutely. So the, um, Philadelphia Museum of Art was a huge building, huh, guys? That was just enormous, and they had some very nice pieces in it, but yes, Van Gogh is one of my favorites, and uh, it seems like a lot of you guys like them, too. I guess I better stop and show you what I've done, and as you can tell, my page is really filling up. And um, again, if we had even more time, it would be even busier and um, more lively and, um, you know, uh, more completed. But I don't know about you. We've been on together for almost an hour and the time has just flown by because we've all been so busy and I can personally guarantee, even though I cannot see them all, I can personally guarantee that every single one is different because even though I taught you the same technique, every single kid has taken the idea and applied their own individualism to it. And that's what's so cool about art in general. There are no two artists exactly the same. Everybody has their own personal style. And that's a microcosm of life. You know, you go through life with your own style. We all dress, uh, you know, to our own liking and we style our hair to our own liking. And I don't have much of a choice how I style my hair, but I, I have a round head, so I so I like it. <laughs> but, um, you know, art is a microcosm of life. It's just, you know, a way to be creative and uh, show off your individualism while being happy about it. So I, I'm going to hand it over to you, Miss Brittany. I hope, you know, thank you guys for being I don't know, just a wonderful audience and allowing me to do this because I don't get to do it too much anymore. And then um, the next time I, uh, 
I work with you all, we'll, we'll do, you know, more characters because it'll be animal week, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. So again, absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. K, for being here going through this. This was a phenomenal thing, if you ask me. It's something nice that anyone can go ahead and do and just sit and draw and relax. And what I'd like to do, of course, is see those pictures first. So, um, Mr. K, if you are looking at your Zoom screen. Yeah, so how do I do this? How do I do this? If you go to the upper right hand corner, you should see view and you can change it from speaker to gallery. Let me and put my glasses on. Okay. <laughs> can you say that again? Go to <laughs> view. Okay. Uh huh. And then you can change it from speaker to gallery and that'll pop oh, up. Wow. See so that? If, You're never too old to learn something new, kiddos. <laughs> if you guys want to go wow. ahead and take a minute and hold your pieces up to the camera. Wow. So you can go ahead and see it and Mr. K can see them all. Just look at those. We have a bunch of like Beautiful. Sets. Every single one is different, huh? I love them. Yeah. Wow. And thumbs up. Spencer says, hang on. He's grabbing his. Um thumbs up if you wow tristan and grayson great work everybody I, I hate to i hate to point anybody out individually because they're all wonderful you know i don't have time to mention everybody um thumbs up if you think you're going to work on it some more after we close out the lesson <laughs> whoa nice painting spencer bro that's incredible um and then how about this final question for me? Thumbs up if you think you're going to go online and look up the word Zen Tangle, Z-E-N-T, and then the word angle. And I'm, I promise you, like, you will see millions of different designs that you can copy. And guess what? Mr. K, sorry that he has his, like, Under Armour thing hanging, like, from his uh, curtain rod there. I was trying to keep it from being wrinkled, but... Um... <laughs> That's okay, huh? We all have some fun stuff in our background sometimes. <laughs> Definitely, guys, thank you so much for sharing all of these. I do want to know if anyone does have any questions for Mr. K to go ahead and throw them in the chat and we can go ahead and grab them. Uh, but if not, that's perfectly fine. I'm so happy to hear that so many of you want to continue working on these and it's going to go ahead and look up Zentangle. I did go ahead and put it in the chat for you guys so you can see how it's spelled and everything. Uh, but I am not seeing anything specific for questions. I'm just seeing a bunch of beautiful artwork so guys thank you so much for sharing that mr k thank you so much for sharing your time oh, absolutely my. i'm going to be with you here next week as well so if anybody okay, wants cool. to go ahead and see mr k again he will be here next week uh, but beyond that uh, i am going to go ahead and shut off the recording and i do want to let you guys